book one chapters twenty one through twenty five of the consoling thoughts of st francis de sales by jean joseph Huguet. this librivox recording is in the public domain book one consoling thoughts on god providence the saints chapter twenty one an admirable model of perfect abandonment we may believe that the most holy virgin our blessed lady derives so much contentment from carrying her dear little jesus in her arms that this contentment prevented weariness or at least made it agreeable for if to carry a twig of agnes castus refreshes travellers what alleviation would not the glorious mother receive from carrying the immaculate lamb of god and if sometimes she allowed him to walk beside her holding him by the hand it was not that she would not much prefer to have him on her bosom with his arms around her neck but it was because she wished to exercise him in forming his steps and to support himself and we like our heavenly father's little children can also advance in two ways first by the steps of our own will when we conform it to his holding the hand of his divine will by that of our obedience and following wherever he conducts us that is to say doing what he signifies to be his wish for when he wishes anything to be done he always gives the power to do it and secondly we can accompany our lord without any trouble of our own merely allowing ourselves to be carried by him according to the divine good pleasure as an infant in the arms of its mother by an admirable agreement which is called the union or rather the unity of our will with that of god if any one had asked the sweet infant jesus in the arms of his mother whither he went might he not reasonably have replied i go nowhere it is my mother who goes for me and if he had been questioned but at least do you not go with your mother might he not reasonably have answered no i go nowhere or if i go where my mother carries me it is not by my own steps i go but by the steps of my mother and if the inquiry had been continued but at least o oh dear divine infant you wish to allow yourself to be carried by your blessed mother no certainly he might have said i wish for nothing of the kind but as my good mother travels for me so she wishes for me i leave to her the care of going and coming for me as appears to her good and as i only walk by her steps so i only wish by her desires when i find myself in her arms i pay no attention to this or that but leave every care to my mother except the one of resting on her bosom of nourishing myself with her virginal milk and of holding fast to her most amiable neck while i lovingly kiss her with the kisses of my mouth and while i enjoy the delights of these holy caresses which surpass all expression it seems to me that my mother is a tree of life and that i am her fruit or that i am her very heart in the midst of her bosom or her soul in the midst of her heart therefore as her steps suffice for her and me without my making one so her will suffices for her and me without my taking any concern about her going or coming neither am i troubled whether she goes quickly or slowly or from one side to the other nor do i inquire to what place she goes being content that whatever happens i am in her arms and on her virginal bosom where i feast myself among the lilies o divine child of mary grant to my poor soul some of these transports of holy love go then most amiable dear little child or rather go not but remain resting on the bosom of thy sweet mother go always with her and by her and never go without her so long as thou art a child 
blessed is the womb that bore thee and the paps that gave thee suck this is the manner in which we ought like wax to be pliable in the hands of the divine good pleasure not wasting our time in fretting about events but allowing god to do for us as pleases him according to the words of the great apostle cast your solicitude on him for he has care of you he says all your solicitude that is both present and future for he will have care of the success of our undertakings and of wishing for us whatever is best chapter twenty two it is good to abandon oneself to providence the providence of god is infinite and admirable it reaches to all things reigns over all things and turns all things to its glory he who considers well the doings of providence the daily and universal commerce which creatures carry on with such extraordinary harmony for the service of man must be moved with a thousand loving emotions towards the supreme wisdom and cry out thy providence o eternal father governs us most wonderfully first god furnishes men with all means necessary to attain their end the visible sun communicates his light and heat to the universe without him there would be neither worth nor beauty in the world he is the universal principle of life to inferior things giving them the vigor they require in like manner the divine goodness animates all souls to gain their salvation and encourages all hearts to its love and service without any one being able to hide from its celestial influences with this intention god made us to his own image and likeness at creation and made himself to our image and likeness at the incarnation after which he suffered death to redeem the whole human race and reinstate it in life we ought indeed a hundred times a day to cast our eyes on the loving providence of god who has his heart always turned towards us by foresight as we should have ours always turned towards him by confidence and placing our hearts in his divine will we should cry out devoutly o infinitely sweet goodness how amiable is thy will how desirable are thy favors thou hast created us for eternal life and thy maternal breast enlarged with the sacred paps of incomparable love abounds in the milk of mercy whether to forgive the penitent or to perfect the just why then do we not hang our wills on thine as little children nestle themselves in the bosom of their mothers to drink the milk of thy eternal benedictions oh how true it is that god is a thousand and a thousand times more worthy of being loved than he is loved my god what pleasure should our understanding take in the frequent thought of thy divinity since it is so good so sweet so beautiful so kind towards all so willing to communicate itself would it not be happy to love of necessity this infinite beauty and incomprehensible goodness as is done by the blessed spirits who are constrained by a most sweet and inevitable necessity to love it eternally ah how much god loves us how sweetly he protects and guides us he wishes us to be entirely his let us not seek then other arms to rest in than those of his providence let us not cast our looks elsewhere let us repose our mind on him alone let us keep our will united to his that his and ours may be only one let us wish sweetly whatever he wishes let us allow him to govern us let us not reflect so much upon ourselves let us forever live on the mercy of his providence all will go well when our soul has no other retreat than in god and the train of our affairs will succeed more prosperously when he assists us 
can the child perish who is in the arms of an almighty god desire nothing resign your cares to divine providence allow god to do with you whatever he pleases as little children surrender themselves to their nurses let him carry you on his right arm or on his left as he chooses an infant does not take offence at either if he would lay you down or lift you up permit him for like a good nurse he knows better than ourselves what we need i mean to say that if divine providence permits trials or afflictions to befall you refuse them not but accept them willingly tranquilly and lovingly if he permits them not desire them not and thus you will keep your heart always prepared for the divine dispensations every one knows how to be resigned amid the joys and happiness of prosperity but to be so amid storms and tempests is peculiar to the children of god let the heavens combine against me let the earth and the elements rebel let every creature declare war against my existence i fear not it is enough for me that god is with me and i with him let our lord turn and push us to the right or to the left let him as with new jacobs hold us fast and give us a hundred turns let him force us sometimes on one side sometimes on the other in a word let him deal us a thousand injuries yet we will not let him go until he gives us his eternal benediction thus our good god will never abandon us unless to hold us better he will never leave us unless to guard us better he will never wrestle with us unless to yield to us and bless us o oh god what a happiness to be thus resigned to the good pleasure of our sweet saviour by an abandonment of our whole being to his holy providence how happy should we be if submitting our will to that of god we would adore it equally in times of tribulation and of consolation assured that all events proceed from his divine hand for our advantage to purify and refine us in holy charity let us therefore embark on the sea of divine providence without biscuit without oars without sails in a word without any supplies let us leave the care of our affairs to our lord without any fear his goodness will provide sufficiently for all our lord has taught me from my youth to confide in providence and if i were to be born again i would desire to be governed even in the least things by his holy providence with the simplicity of a child and with a profound contempt for all human prudence it is a great enjoyment to me to walk with eyes closed under the guidance of providence whose designs are impenetrable but are always sweet and amiable to those who confide in them let us leave our soul then in the bark of providence it will conduct us safely to port happy are they who confide in him who as god is able as a father is willing to grant us everything good miserable on the contrary are those who trust in creatures which promise great things give little and make the purchaser pay dearly for the little they give since the providence of god is such as we have described it let us belong in such a manner to god that we may belong to no one else for no one can serve two masters should we not be content to leave our life and all that we possess to the pure disposal of this adorable providence for we are no longer our own but the property of him who to make us his was pleased in so loving a manner to become entirely ours providence defers its assistance only to excite our confidence if our heavenly father does not always grant what we ask it is to keep us near him 
and to give us occasion of pressing him by a loving violence as he showed well to the two pilgrims of emmaus with whom he would not have tarried only that as the day was drawing to a close they prevailed on him let nothing separate us from his holy love let our heart whether languishing or dying or living have never any life but in him and for him and let him be for ever the god of our heart let the storm and the tempest come you shall not perish you are with jesus if fear seize on you cry out o saviour save me he will reach out his hand grasp it and proceed joyfully without philosophizing on your mishap so long as st peter had confidence the tempest could not harm him when he feared he sank fear is often a greater danger than the danger itself as for me there are times when it appears to me that i have not strength to resist and that if an occasion presented itself i should succumb but i only place my confidence the more in god and hold as certain that in presence of the occasion god will support me with his strength and that i shall destroy my enemies as so many little lambkins when you feel that on account of the multitude of your imperfections confidence is wanting to you to have recourse to our lord let the superior part of your soul rejoice using some words of hope and love to our lord with more earnestness and more frequency than usual be very careful not to become disturbed after having fallen into any fault nor to yield to compassionate emotions over yourself which proceed from pride but humble yourself promptly before god with a sweet and loving humility that will lead you to have recourse confidently and immediately to his goodness being assured of his assistance to you to amend when you fall prostrate yourself before god to say to him in a spirit of confidence and humility mercy o lord for i am weak raise us up again in peace and join again the thread of thy love to continue thy work we have imperfections but it is necessary to be content with being men and not angels to despise temptations to go forward without regard to them and to banish diffidence by the thought that god is more merciful than we are miserable suffer undisturbed the want of sensible consolation a single act of virtue made in time of aridity being of much more value than many made with a stronger though less agreeable love in fine make a peaceful abandonment of yourself to providence in the various occurrences of life and even in the presence of death god has watched over you until the present hold fast by the hand of his providence and he will assist you and where you cannot walk he will carry you i hope that god will strengthen you more and more and that the thought or rather temptation that your present fervor will not continue answer once for all that those who confide in god shall never be confounded and that as you have cast both for soul and body your care on the lord he will not fail to provide for you let us serve god well to-day he will take care of to-morrow every day should carry its own burden have no anxiety about to-morrow for god who reigns to-day will reign to-morrow either he will not send you adversity or if he will send it he will give you an invincible courage to meet it if assaulted by temptations desire not to be freed from them it is good that we should experience them in order to have an opportunity of combating them and of gaining victories this serves as an exercise in the most excellent virtues thus grounded deeply in the soul moreover keep your eyes lifted up to god 
erect your courage on holy humility strengthen it in meekness confirm it in equanimity let your mind be ever master of its inclinations and allow no apprehensions to seize upon your heart you have already passed through many dangers and it was by the grace of god you did so the same grace will be near you on all succeeding occasions and will deliver you from difficulties one after another though an angel from heaven should be required to guide your wavering steps cast not your eyes on your infirmities and insufficiencies unless to become more humble never to be discouraged often look on your right hand to god and the two angels whom he has appointed to you one for your own person another for the direction of your little family say to these holy angels sirs how shall we act beseech them to furnish you with a knowledge of the divine will and to contemplate the inspirations which our lady would wish you to receive from her paps of love regard not the variety of imperfections that live in you and in all those persons whom our lord and our lady have confided to you unless to increase in a holy fear of offending god but never to be surprised for it is not a wonderful thing that each herb and flower in a garden should require a particular kind of care chapter twenty three fear and hope to walk securely in this life we must always walk between fear and hope between fear of the judgments of god which are unfathomable abysses and hope of his mercies which are without number or measure and over all his works we must fear the divine judgments but without discouragement and be encouraged at the sight of the mercies of god without presumption those who entertain an extreme and inordinate dread of being damned show that they have more need of humility and submission than of understanding we must indeed abase annihilate and lose our soul but only to exalt preserve and save it that humility which is prejudicial to charity is undoubtedly a false humility whatever leads to discouragement to despair to trouble is contrary to charity which teaches us to make every effort though with fear and trembling but never to distrust the goodness of god who wills all men to be saved and to come to penance we serve a master who is rich in mercy to those who invoke him he cancels a debt of ten thousand talents on a very brief petition we must have sentiments worthy of his goodness yet serve him with fear for while we tremble we must not cease to rejoice that humility which discourages is not a good humility chapter twenty four a will perfectly resigned imagine you behold the glorious and ever admirable st louis setting sail for a foreign land and the queen his wife embarking with his majesty suppose that some one inquires of this heroic princess where are you going madam she would undoubtedly answer i am going wherever the king is going but do you know where the king is going she would say he has told me in general yet i have no anxiety to know where he is going but only to go with him then madam you have no special purpose in this voyage no she would reply i have no other than that of being with my dear lord and husband the other might add see he goes to egypt to pass to palestine he will stay at damascus at acre and many other places do you not intend madam to reside there also no indeed she would say i have no intention unless to be near my king and the places he will visit are of no consideration to me unless inasmuch as he will be there i shall go without desiring to go for i care about nothing 
but the presence of the king it is the king who desires the voyage and as for me i desire no voyage but only the presence of the king journeys delays and everything else being quite indifferent to me thus a will resigned to that of its god should have no other desire than simply to follow the will of god as he who sails on board a ship does not advance by his own motion but by the motion of the vessel so the heart embarked on board the divine good pleasure should have no other wish than that of being carried by the will of god then no more will the heart be heard to say thy will be done not mine for it will no longer have any will to renounce but it will say these words lord into thy hands i commend my will as if its will were no more at its own disposal but only at that of the divine providence among all the pleasures of perfect love that which is found in the acquiescence of the soul to spiritual tribulations is unquestionably the purest and most refined the blessed angela of foligno gives us an admirable description of the interior pains which she sometimes endured she says that her soul was in torment like a man with his hands and feet tied hanging by the neck between life and death yet not strangled without any hope of succor unable to support himself with his feet to assist himself with his hands to cry out with his mouth or even to sigh it is really so the soul is sometimes so pressed with interior afflictions that all its powers and faculties are crushed and desolated by the absence of everything that could solace it as well as by the dread and apprehension of everything that could sadden it to such an extent that after the example of its saviour it begins to grow weary to fear to shudder then to be sad with a sadness like that of the dying when it can well exclaim my soul is sorrowful even unto death and with the consent of its whole interior it desires implores and beseeches that if it be possible this chalice may pass away from it remaining attached only by the finest point of the spirit to the heart and good pleasure of god and making one simple act of acquiescence o eternal father may my will be never done but thine and if it is remarkable that the soul makes this act of resignation in the midst of so much trouble so many repugnances and contradictions that it does not perceive itself doing so at least it imagines that its acts are all so languid that they cannot come from the heart or be of any value because what is regarded then as the divine good pleasure is endured not only without pleasure or contentment but even contrary to the pleasure and contentment of the heart which love allows to utter all the lamentations of job and jeremiah but on condition that one act of acquiescence should be made in the inmost depths in the purest part of the soul and this acquiescence is not sweet or tender or sensible though it is real and strong and loving it seems to have retired into the furthest corner of the soul or as it were into the citadel of the fortress where it remains courageous though all the rest has fallen and is overwhelmed with sadness and the more removed this love is from aid abandoned by the faculties of the soul the more sublime is its constancy and the nobler its fidelity chapter twenty five the love of submission by which our will is united to the good pleasure of god we do not conform ourselves to the divine will of good pleasure in the same manner as to the signified will of god for the will of good pleasure has no need of our obedience in order to be accomplished without us and in spite of us it will always be done 
nevertheless we can honor it and unite ourselves to it by submitting to what it ordains when love induces us to submit to it we call it the love of submission but this union and conformity with the divine good pleasure is made either by a holy resignation or by a most holy indifference resignation is practised by way of effort we would rather live than die nevertheless since it is the will of god that we should die we are content we would like to live if it were pleasing to god and moreover we would like it to please god to let us live we die willingly but we would live much more willingly we pass away satisfied but we would remain much better satisfied job in his sorrows displayed this resignation if we have received good things he says from the lord why should we not also receive evil things he speaks of supporting and enduring trials as it hath pleased the lord so is it done blessed be the name of the lord these are the words of acceptance and resignation uttered by way of patience and endurance this resignation is agreeable to god for the love which produces it is great but it attains its highest excellence when we cherish love and embrace sufferings on account of the divine good pleasure which sends them to us end of book one chapter twenty five